All right, this is a video on the 10 basic Ubuntu commands that you should know. Now, these are commands if you are going to be using Linux or Ubuntu at all. These are some basic commands that you should know if you do it at a, if you use Linux at a job. You can start here with these basic commands and kind of learn how to navigate yourself around. So, I'm going to start with 10, try to bite sized chunks here. I'm going to log in. This is my Ubuntu server. I'm going to log in as user1. My password. All right, so you can see here I'm using Ubuntu version 19.10, and we'll start with the first command, which is actually we're gonna we're gonna pull up another command that I showed in a previous video, but pwd, and this is where I'm at here. Pwd. If I press enter, it's gonna show me which directory I'm in. So when I go through these commands, it's going to be affecting this particular user, home user1. So this is my home folder is where I'm at, and this is user1, which is who I am right now. It's logged in. First, I'm going to start off by um, make dir. Make dir is the first command. Make dir just simply means make directory, and we're going to call this directory uh, test. Test1. Okay, so now if I do ls, I have this new directory in here called test1. Now I can show you again, I'm going to make directory again and do test2. Now if I do ls, I have another directory. So you see how that works. I'm just creating directories here, uh, test1 and test2. Now these uh, these directories are empty right now, and I can put files in here, but this shows you how these directories are being created. Next, the next command is MV, and it stands for move. So MV. Now, say for instance, if I want to move that directory test2 into test1, I'm going to try to do that with an MV command. So MV, and we know this is at home slash user1 and the directory is called test t, test 2 test 2 we're going to move it to home so user1 and see if we can move it to test1 see if that works okay so what I'm doing here is I'm moving this test2 this folder right here, this directory, I'm going to move it into test1. And I'm going to press enter. Okay, so if I, now if I go and type ls, I only see this folder and that folder, um, the snap and the test1. So this test2 has been moved in under test1. So just to verify that, I can type in ls. If I do a tech r, which is for recursive, actually, I think it may be a capital R. All right. So now I can see under snap, it's going to give me, the, it's got PowerShell. Under test1, here is test2. So you can see that worked out well. Um, and that's how you use the MV command. And as I mentioned before in previous videos, if you type in the command such as MV and then do dash dash and help, it will give you all the features that the command has. So typically, like the default is option to do source and destination, uh, source directory. Uh, there's some other ways. I won't go into all of this, but you can read a on this for yourself, just be aware that the help menu is there underneath that command. All right, so the next command is, let me get some space here, cd. cd, so if I want to change directory currently, to show you, I'm in pwd, so I'm in the user home slash user one directory. Now say if I want to move, switch directories here, I can go into, 
Let's see. CD. Let's see if I can just type in CD test one. So that drops me off right in the test one folder there. Now if I type in PWD, this is where I'm at. So instead of being at home and user one, I'm now under home, user one, and test one. And so un under test one, I'm going to type in ls, and we see we have that test two folder sitting right there, which brings us to our next command, which is remove directory. And the remove directory, the command for that is rmdir. So now if I type that in and I type in test two and press enter, now if I type in ls to list the contents of that, now there's nothing else under test one as it was before. So if I list the contents of test one, there's nothing in there now. So it just brought me back to the prompt. But I'm actually going to recreate the directory. I'm going to do mkdir test2, press enter. And if I do ls again, now I have a new test2 folder underneath test1. So rmdir is to remove directory. Now just rm is used to remove a specific file. So I'm going to create, to create a file in Ubuntu or in Linux. First thing I need to do is um, run the touch command. Touch, and let's make a test file. Test file um, dot txt. Press enter. So now if I type in ls, I have Underneath test one, now I have a test two, fo a test two folder, and a test file.txt, which I just created. So that that's how you create a any kind of file in Linux. You can just type in touch, and then the name of the file. So now that we have a test file, if I want to delete that test file, that text, I can type in rm test file and that will just delete that singular file. So if I type in ls now, I only have test2. So rm also has a bunch of switches, so if we type in rm tech tech help, it's going to show all the different switches that the rm command has, different types of uh, recursive remove directories and their contents, remove empty directories, so you can actually remove directories with this file. It also has um, some other switches that you can put in. Also with the rmdir. Let's put the help on that and just see. So this has a few other switches. So actually rm has more switches, has more features to it than the actual rmdir directory. So those are the two remove files. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create another file. So I'm going to type in touch again. Touch, and this is going to be test file onetxt right. I'm going to try let's see. txt. My ls, so I can just see that sitting right there. So this is my test file again. And I'm going to check the permissions on it. So that brings us to our next command, which Okay, so the next command is called chmod. chmod deals with uh, owners, groups, and other permissions. So basically the permissions on the files and folders. It's a very important command to be able to restrict or allow people or our services or users or whatever to access a file. So back in our test folder one, type in ls, we have this test file dot test file onetxt Now if I want to check the permissions, I'm going to run the ls command dash l and this will tell me that this text test file dash one has these permissions. Now the way this works is there's three different groups. This is group one, this is group two, and this is group three. And each one of these groups represents somebody. So this first group represents the owner, the file owner. 
The second group re represents any groups on the computer. So think of a group like uh, administrators, or it could be anything like, yeah, so a group like administrators, or it could be, you know, just a accounting group or whatever kind of group you want to make. The third and final octet, not octet, but the third and final setting here, group here, is for others. So this will be anybody outside of those two, first two groups. So it wouldn't be the owner, it wouldn't be a group, it'd just be anybody else on the computer. So right now, what this these letters mean, the R and the W means read and write. So this is telling me that the owner of this file has read and write access. It's telling me the group that created this file has read and write access. And anybody else has only read access. So if I want to change the permissions on this to let everybody just have read and write access, then I would use the chmod command. A chmod. And to represent the letters read and write, um, you can use the number. So there, there are eight different numbers, starting at zero to seven. And zero being no permissions, and seven being read, write, and execute permissions. If I wanted this user to have this particular file to have read and write access not only for the owners, not only for the group, but also for anybody else, then I would type in the chmod command and I could type in 77777. Then I could do test file.txt. This test file one. So this is what I'm going to type it in right here. It's chmod seven seven seven. So I'm taking using this command, applying these variables. The seven seven seven. This is one seven for the owner, one seven for the group, and one seven is for everybody else. And what these are, what this is going to change, this should give me a, a read write for the other group. Okay. Press enter. Okay, so it didn't give me any kind of error, so let's check the permissions on this file again. ls-l, and this is the test file, dash one. So I'm gonna press enter. So this actually gave, and this is correct, read, write, and execute permissions to this group, which is the owners, this group, which is the group, and this group, which is anybody else on this computer. So currently anybody can make changes on this file without having any repercussions. I'm gonna change this back to 774. And I'm gonna look at the permissions again. Okay, so now it's back to read, write, execute, read, write, execute, and read for others. The next command is sudo. sudo is basically if you're familiar with windows you know how you get with that pop-up screen that comes up it just says okay uh enter your password for this because we need to make sure that you have the rights to do this it's kind of like a fail safe and sudo is similar to that in linux sudo basically allows you to elevate your privilege um, if you can't run something if you can't do anything then you type in sudo and that will allow you to be prompted for an administrative password and user account that you can actually do whatever you need to do and override the basic user privileges. I just realized I missed one command, which is the copy command. The copy command is CP. I'm going to do the help real quick to see what switches there are. Copy has a lot of different different arguments. The simplest one is just to CP source and directory. 
So in this right here, I have test file one. So what I want to do is I want to copy test file one to this test folder, test two folder. So I'm going to try CP test file one. And I'm going to try to put it over here into test test two. And I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to change directory to test2. I'm going to type in ls to see what's in there. And there's test file 1 sitting over there. So copy, just real simple. The, the default, you could just put in the source and destination. The next command is called locate. So locate is like a search. Um, a search for the terminal window here. So if I type in locate, and we know we have a file called test file one, and I press enter, it says command locate not found but can be installed with a sudo apt get install and locate. So we'll try that. I just typed that, I typed that wrong. Locate. All right, so that's installing, um, initializing the mlocate database. So the database is what it uses to basically search. So it indexes the files so it can easily find them. This will take a minute. Okay, so this is a new install, so it didn't take very long at all. So now I'm going to type in the word locate, the command locate. And I know I have a file called test file one. And it quickly shows me that it's here and it's here, which that's the copy we did earlier. So this works pretty good to be able to find any, any file on your system. Uh, also, if we type in the help command as usual, you can see how many switches that it has. So that's locate. Um, apt get we kind of just did apt get which is the final one of these 10 basic Linux commands apt get allows you to install applications on on Linux so we use apt get right here sudo apt get install mlocate if it could find it then it reads the packages then it builds dependency and it'll go ahead and install it so it went out to the archive. Now this is where all of the packages live for Ubuntu. But that's it for the top 10 basic Ubuntu commands. You should know um, I might have more videos going deeper into these specific commands. But for now, you can just take a look at those commands. If you get familiar with all of these and you can use them well, then you're on your way to learning Linux and Ubuntu well. Thanks for watching.